on this Saturday night, grounded. Hundreds of WestJet flights canceled after the airline's maintenance engineers go on strike. I'm very disappointed, but so we can't go, so we had to go home. Upending the long weekend travel plans for tens of thousands of people. Growing political pressure to call it quits. I think the party is over for Justin Trudeau. I don't know how he can survive. As Democrats in the U.S. panic over Joe Biden's disastrous debate performance. Plus, the next generation weapon, changing the landscape of the war between Ukraine and Russia. It's an ever present danger and it's, uh, they're, they're very frightening. How drones are literally being used to hunt down soldiers and how a Canadian is trying to thwart them. Global National, reporting tonight, Anthony Robart. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Well, it's the Saturday of one of Canada's busiest long weekends, but instead of jetting off to see family and friends, thousands of would-be travelers find themselves scrambling today. A mechanic strike at WestJet has gone ahead to the surprise of many. And the airline says at least 235 flights have been canceled, affecting some 33,000 people. A dramatic change from Thursday when Ottawa imposed binding arbitration in the hopes of preventing a work stoppage. The federal government says it is meeting with both sides to find a solution, but at least for today, the damage is done, with Canadians at every corner of the country left in limbo. Sean O'Shea has tonight's top story. The sudden strike surprised almost everyone, hitting travelers at the airport the hardest, including families leaving on vacation. I'm very disappointed, but so we can't go, so we had to go home. For this year, we cannot go for vacation. We had only this time slot. As unionized aircraft maintenance engineers began a legal strike. The company's decision to stop negotiating with us fairly and to go to the labor minister for arbitration, uh, that changed everything. We're outraged and I just want to make sure that you rest assured that we are doing everything we can to get this resolved. WestJet said the union walked away from a deal that would have made the WestJet maintenance engineers the highest paid in Canada. Their only purpose was to disrupt as many Canadian travel as, uh, as possible. The strike and cancellations follow a directive by the federal labor minister asking the Canada Industrial Relations Board to impose binding arbitration to solve the issues. The union went ahead anyway. If they get a fair deal, it could entice people back from retirement. It could entice new people into the industry. There's an industry-wide shortage of qualified aircraft mechanics. WestJet said it's trying to keep as many as 35 planes in the air, nearly 100 fewer than usual. Adopting a let's just roll with it attitude and rather than getting all stressed out. That's easier for some travelers than others. This man was headed to the Dominican Republic to hoist the maple leaf on Canada's birthday. Unfortunately, uh, WestJet canceled my flight and I got all the flags for all the city that we're going to celebrate uh, Canada Day. The strike has some loyal WestJet customers questioning future travel. I'm I, I thinking twice about booking my next flight with WestJet. And for those stranded or stuck, you'll get a refund, possibly a night at a hotel. But beyond that, we're not in a position to, uh, to provide any additional compensation. As travelers try to figure out other ways to get where they're going on the first long weekend of summer. Air Canada told us with the peak summer travel season here, most of their aircraft are full and they have limited extra capacity to help those stranded WestJet passengers. Anthony. Thank you, Sean. That is Sean O'Shea at Toronto's Pearson International Airport for us tonight. Thank you again. Well, to Montreal now, and around 30 protesters blocked a railway this morning in support of Palestinians as the war in Gaza rages on. The demonstration obstructed the CN rail line connecting Montreal and Halifax. A statement by organizers claims they were blocking a vital artery for sending goods to Israel from Halifax, saying all trade with Israel supports genocidal violence and must be stopped. The blockade ended more than an hour after police moved in. Two people were arrested. The Transportation Safety Board is investigating a helicopter crash in the Northwest Territories. The Bell helicopter was involved in firefighting operations near Fort Good Hope and went down on Friday at the town's airport. Fire officials confirmed one person was on board, but their condition is unclear at this point. Fort Good Hope has been evacuated for two weeks as crews battle a wildfire nearby. Well, turning to the other big story in Canada and growing questions tonight about the political fate of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. 
This after a devastating loss for the Liberals in the riding of Toronto, St. Paul's earlier this week. Now that defeat sparking discontent, frustration and anger within the Liberal caucus. Here's our Ottawa Bureau Chief Mercedes Stevenson and how the Prime Minister's office is working overtime to lower the political heat. Having a good night tonight. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was in the Greater Toronto Area Friday night, hoping to turn on the charm at an Asian food festival after a devastating loss in the Toronto riding of St. Paul's earlier this week. The Prime Minister put on a brave face at a Markham fundraiser. Thank you all for choosing to be positive about politics. But his refusal to address what happened to a supposedly safe Liberal seat, or what it means for his future, has left frustration and anger in his own party and his caucus festering. I think the party is over for Justin Trudeau. I don't know how he can survive. Well, the PM isn't saying much in public. It seems there's a plan underway behind the scenes. But it's not the caucus meeting to vent frustration that some MPs are demanding. Rather, it's a phone campaign. This is the only indication thus far we've got that they're doing, frankly, anything to quell this dissent. <laughs> Senior Liberal sources have told Global News that the Prime Minister, his most trusted staff, and some cabinet ministers are reaching out to Liberal MPs to hear their concerns, one-on-one, -on -one, hoping to bring down the temperature. An effort Toronto Star columnist Justin Ling witnessed firsthand when Environment Minister Stephen Guilbeault started making calls in the middle of a Via Rail lounge in Toronto. As Gibo explained it, he was there at the behest of the Prime Minister's office and he was going to go meet with them and talk to a whole bunch of other people across the country and report back. Ling says the Environment Minister was exploring how people felt about the options for the PM, aware the Liberals are in trouble. In a statement, Gilbo said, one-way conversations taken out of context do not reflect the open and honest exchanges that I regularly have with my caucus colleagues. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has my full support. Liberal strategists, senior staff and MPs Global News spoke to all agreed on one thing, there must be a change. But what that looks like is very much a debate. From MP Wayne Long's letter calling for Trudeau to quit, to Nate Erskine-Smith, a popular outgoing Liberal MP's more subtle criticism in this Twitter video. This isn't about one person. This is about our country. Trudeau would do well to remember that. Sources close to Justin Trudeau say he is the best person to defend his legacy in what will likely be an election about change. But some political analysts say his staying on would spell the party's doom. I think this opposition now is insurmountable. Both friends and enemies of Justin Trudeau say time may have run out for a change in leadership, regardless of how unpopular he is. With an election coming soon, Canadians need to know who is leading the party. Some say it would be better for him to stay on and try to win or go down with the ship rather than risking another leader. Mercedes, so some big developments there, but also some major news that was really lost amid all the political rumblings around Trudeau's fate involving Canada's military. What's the latest there? Any other day, this probably would have been huge news, but we found out late yesterday afternoon via leaks that there is a new chief of the defense staff for the Canadian Armed Forces, and she will make history as the first woman to command Canada's military, Lieutenant General Jenny Carignan. She's a combat engineer by trade. Those are the soldiers who go into the field and disarm bombs. They had an incredibly important job and a very high casualty rate in Afghanistan because of how dangerous their work is. She she has most recently been the chief of culture change for the Canadian Armed Forces. So some say that her appointment will signal that the military is putting more emphasis there, while others say just how much the culture change has been successful will come under even greater scrutiny. This process has taken a very long time. Months ago, Wayne Eyre, the current CDS, announced that he was going to resign. Jenny Carignan has long been the front runner for the Prime Minister's office, and she has emerged victorious as the next chief of the defense. Staff. Well, we appreciate the updates on two major stories. Thank you so much, Mercedes. That is our Ottawa Bureau Chief, Mercedes Stevenson, joining us from the nation's capital. Thank you again. And there's more follow tonight after that first presidential debate on CNN between President Joe Biden and Donald Trump. It's one many analysts called a disaster for Biden. But the president is refusing to throw in the towel. And his campaign is confident he can still recover from one bad night. Reggie Cicchini has more. Facing a reality that his age is more than just a number, U.S. President Joe Biden shuttled between fundraisers on Saturday to prove his political worth. 
amid growing concern that he might not be up to the job. After studying for a week, that was a bad performance. Biden's octogenarian status has been a public conversation since he announced his 2024 candidacy and repeatedly dismissed by his campaign as an issue. I know I'm not a young man. But even with a moderate recovery, his shortcomings created shockwaves. It really, in so many ways, represented why so many Americans are distressed and despondent that these are their choices. After the debate wrapped, trust in Joe Biden's abilities flatlined. There was a 7% drop with likely voters who rated Biden's mental fitness as good or excellent. The decline was steepest among Democrats, dropping 14 points, while ratings of Trump's mental fitness were stable. The panic was so great, the New York Times editorial board used its platform to urge Biden to step aside, arguing it to be the best chance to protect the soul of the nation. This is a 24-hour job, 365 days of the year. You have to be on your game, and uh, he's just not showing it right now. I think people have been weaponizing um, age uh, as a way to try and discredit. No group more so than the Republican Party. I would ask the cabinet members to search their hearts. The GOP is pushing to invoke a constitutional amendment that allows the executive cabinet to deem the president incapable. A partisan and unlikely move, meaning Biden will remain in office and in this race after securing enough delegates during the primaries. The nomination is his as long as he wants it because he has those delegates. The question is, does he release them at the convention? And if so, does he make an endorsement? And then we have a number of people scrambling to try to get those delegates that then become the Democratic nominee. Biden believes only he can beat Donald Trump again despite the risks this race poses to his political legacy. Reggie Chikini, Global News, Washington. Iranians are voting for a new president after the previous one was killed in a helicopter crash last month. But Friday's national vote did not produce a decisive winner. The percentage of voters who turned out to cast a ballot was the lowest, in fact, since the Islamic Republic was created 46 years ago. That's in part because of the dearth of qualified candidates, plus general disenfranchisement with a political process in Iran. The leading candidate, a heart surgeon who vows to restore ties with the West, was unable to secure the required 50% plus one majority required and will face off against his more hardline rival in a runoff vote on July 5th. Coming up next, terrifying weapons of war. Warfare has changed and it is never going back. How next-gen drones are literally chasing down soldiers on the front line. We'll show you next. Welcome back. A Russian missile strike has killed at least one person and wounded a dozen others in the Ukrainian city of Dnipro. Ukraine's interior minister warning the death toll is likely to rise as the search continues for people still believed to be trapped in the residential tower that was struck. At least four floors of the nine-story building are destroyed. Incredibly, a man outside the building survived in his car after it was crushed by falling debris. Now, Kiev says separate Russian attacks across eastern Ukraine killed at least 11 people today. And on the other side, Russian officials also reporting attacks by Ukraine tonight, with at least five people said to have been killed by a Ukrainian drone strike in Russia's southwestern Kursk region. The Kremlin adding that it shot down six Ukrainian drones overnight. Now, the use of drones has become pivotal in this conflict, with both sides investing billions of dollars to deploy the unmanned vehicles at an unprecedented scale. Mike Armstrong looks at what that's meant for those on the front lines, including a Canadian on the ground in Ukraine. If they're not firing at drones, they're listening for them. Day and night, there is almost always a buzz in the air. It's an ever-present danger, and it's, um, they're, they're very frightening. Corey Woods is a Canadian working with Ukrainian medics often on the front line. When you hear a drone nearby, he says, it means one is either watching you or targeting you. Once you hear them, you know, it's hard to get that, that sound out of your head. Some of the videos coming out of Ukraine are the stuff of nightmares. Soldiers facing a weapon that's new to the battlefield. First-person drones, FPVs as they're called, in pursuit of prey. They're like flying grenades, 
that chase soldiers. They are damn near impossible to, to get away from unless you are fortunate or the pilot is not that skilled. Now, it has meant adaptations. This is a Russian tank captured by Ukrainian soldiers. An outside shell was added as a protection from FPV drones, even though it restricted the driver's ability to move or see. They've come to be called barn tanks or turtle tanks, and videos shared on social media show they tend not to fare well in a fight. You know, if the first drone doesn't penetrate, second probably will, and if the second doesn't, the third absolutely is going to. Now, a Ukrainian drone team is usually a minimum of four people. A pilot who flies an FPV drone, a co-pilot who operates a drone as a spotter, a technician, and a person who handles the munitions. Depending on the weight and size of a drone, the range is only about 5 to 20 kilometers. Ranges are now being extended with repeater drones. They relay controls from the pilots, meaning the drones can reach farther. Ukrainian Foreign Legion released this video that includes a man said to be a Canadian drone pilot. He describes how his team even peeks in windows, looking for the enemy to warn his troops. It's indispensable. You see the benefit and it makes you almost think like how we're worse fought without this. Warfare has changed and it is never going back. Woods works part-time with a drone unit, the Wild Hornets. They manufacture drones as well as teach crews how to make repairs. Another sign of the times is this recent video from the Wild Hornets. It's a drone making a delivery to the front line, dropping off another drone. Mike Armstrong, Global News, Montreal. And up next, cracking down on greenwashing. The feds pass a bill that tightens the screws on vague environmental promises. What's going to change as Global National continues? Are you trying to make me look stupid in front of the other guests? You don't need any help from me, sir. That's right. That is a snippet from the 1980s dark comedy film Clue, in which Martin Mall plays Colonel Mustard. Amal died this week after a long illness. He was known for his deadpan humor and droll comedic style. In the 1990s, Maul was a regular on the hit sitcom Roseanne and later had acclaimed guest roles on Arrested Development and Veep. Martin Maul was 80 years old. Last week, the federal government imposed new rules against so-called greenwashing. And the move seems to have already made an impact. At least one oil sands lobby has moved to scrub its website clean after the Competition Act was amended to require companies to provide evidence to back up their environmental claims. Heather Yorks West reports on the new rules. If you have questions about where Canada's oil sands industry stands on climate change, you're not alone. It's time to clear the air. You may have seen this ad from a group of Canada's largest oil companies, the Pathways Alliance promoting its plan to get oil sands production to net zero emissions by 2050. You'll now find only a disclaimer on the group's website. With uncertainty, we have removed content from our website, social media and other public communication. It's important that we have uh, markets where uh, there's proper information and I think that's what this bill is trying to achieve, trying to make sure that whenever a company is communicating about what it's doing well in terms of environmental performance, uh, it's backed by evidence. Earlier this month, Ottawa passed a bill that took many in the energy industry by surprise, amending the Federal Competition Act to require that companies that make environmental benefit claims back up their claims with evidence or face steep fines. Certainly with this, there's going to be some companies that didn't have restrictions on what they were saying before. And we're, you know, maybe trying to do their best for the environment, but we're making some fairly large claims. While many environmental advocates have come out in support of the changes, groups representing business and energy industry interests were quick to voice their concerns. Kevin Krauser is the CEO of a Calgary-based clean tech startup accelerator. We've just thrown a pretty large wet bank blanket on the ability of clean technology startups and innovators in our country to be able to advance their technologies so that we can meet our, our climate emission reduction goals. The new laws have also been criticized for being vague, leaving companies unsure of how to properly defend their claims. The Competition Bureau says more clarity is coming. 
Still, the Alberta government says it plans to challenge the legislation in court. Fortunately, they've given a carve out for the provincial government. And so if we're the, the only voice able to be out there loud and proud without the fear of fines or some kind of punishment or some kind of uh, frivolous lawsuits, we're going to do it. While anyone outside government will now need to tread carefully when it comes to communicating their environmental claims. Heather Urex West, Global News, Calgary. Well, for fans of soccer or football, as they call it in Europe, it doesn't get much bigger than this. Swiss fans celebrating a huge win over Italy today as the Euros move to the knockout stages. On the other side, heartbreak in Rome as the defending champions were eliminated. And tonight, there will be more drama on this side of the Atlantic. Canada is playing a pivotal match in the Copa America tournament against Chile. If Canada wins, they will move on to the knockout round. And that is Global National for this Saturday night. I'm Anthony Robart. Tonight's Your Canada is Lorne, Manitoba. Of course, we love seeing Your Canada. Please keep emailing your photos to viewers at globalnational.com. Thank you so much for watching. Nita Garcha will be at the anchor desk tomorrow. Have a great night.